Hey, it's your boy, Sergeant Hook Conventions. Uh, so today we are reviewing Don Brothers Episode 6. Um, behind me is, of course, the new and improved, newly dubbed Henshin Hub. I showed it in my last video for a Revice, Episode 30 review. There's my drivers up there, Revice Driver, Thunder Gale, Genius Full Bottle on the Build Driver, and the Forza Driver with the Forza um, Fly Stamp up there. Of course, my Rio Soldier self, because Rio Soldier is love, Rio Soldier is life. Um, <laughs> And uh, my replica lightsaber, well, actually it's a custom lightsaber, but, um, and my Zero One poster, and my Zero One helmet is over here, and my Kingdom Key. So yeah, um, probably be the backdrop most of my videos and my henchmen videos, stuff like that, but just wanted to kind of show you. But anyway, um, this episode was really, really, really fun. We get a lot of really good information on a lot of the people in the main cast here, um, even a bit of tidbits here and there on the um, uh, brain persons, or as they call them in this now, the Sarah Browns. Um, we'll get to that point. So the main plot of it in this one has to do with, um, it's another Kiji Brother focused episode, which is fine, um, and him wanting to um, be more successful and to kind of impress his wife more. Um, she makes like, make a comment or something like that that spurs it, and he starts like trying, apply, applying himself a little bit, which you find out that like he does have a lot of really good potential, he just needs to apply himself. But of course, like most Sentai, you know, themes or Sentai tropes or whatever, he goes a little too far and he kind of becomes a bit of a dick about it. So um, that's the main plot is him going through and he even gets like a better position. He's making more money. So he's like taking her out to fancy dinner and everything. And you can tell she's starting to get uncomfortable and doesn't know why he's acting like he is. And at one point she ends up fainting too, which is really odd. I don't know why that happened. I don't know if it's got anything to do with her also being inu brother's girlfriend or what's going on with that twin sister or the version of her or what um but uh but yeah so he kind of just rubbing everybody the wrong way um while this is happening um uh sour brother and Oni's sister go to see Jin again and talk to him about what's going on with um damo motaro they try talking to him about it and finding out more about him and why he is the way he is why are they down brothers and what it all means and he gives, gives basic esoteric answers that don't really go anywhere and just says, well, well, we'll figure it out when we need to. And just, and Sarah was like, oh, well, I appreciate the philosophy there, but I'd like to know a little bit more. And so they get transported to see Jin again. And Jin mentions, he talks about the villains. So we find out that the villains are known as Cerebrons and that they're from a higher plane of existence and that there they have been freed of desire and that they see de desire as the enemy. That's why they're making any humans with desire into the, into the Hitotsuoki, the Sentai monsters, you know. Um, and so uh, that is why they're doing what they're doing. They're trying to better understand certain aspects of human life, but they don't have desire anymore, so they have to, you know, they're trying to stamp it out, basically. Um, and so we get a bit more about them and who they are. Um, we even get some scenes with, uh, I think it's Sonona, I think the one, uh, like, that has the sphere, and has, like, brown in his color and everything. Um, he's a big part of this episode. We get this weird concept where him... And I think Sinoni also do this thing where they blow at somebody's forehead and their little door opens. And I'm guessing that shows to show like how much potential they have to become a Hitotsu Oni, Oki, whatever. Um, and uh, he's like spending the whole episode trying to learn how to laugh, which is really weird. Um, and so uh, we get this kind of small, tiny subplot that happens pretty late into the episode of this nurse who wants to really help people, but she goes too far with her desire to help people that she wants to like hospitalize people so she can help them. <laughs> Like personally hospitalized people. So she becomes a, I believe it's a Geogre themed uh, monster. Don't know what that has to do with the whole nurse thing, but she does become a Geogre based one. We get this Geogre altar gear for it too. Um, and uh, Kiji Brother eventually comes at Taro because he says, hey, you know, you're pretty awesome too. I want you to come work for me and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, why would I do that? He's like, what do you mean? He's like, I like my job. He's like, what? Really? You're kind of wasting your talents being a delivery person. He's like, eh, I like my job. I bring, I deliver people things and it makes them happy. That's enough for me. And Kiji Brothers just doesn't understand that now that he's like, you know, a big shot and getting all this success and money and kind of fame or whatever. He's like, that's stupid and blah, blah, blah. Maybe you're not as cool as I thought. And he basically says, huh, you've kind of let me down. And they mentioned at some point about how this like points thing. Um, somebody mentions, I think it was actually Kaito Black at the um, Down Bros Cafe mentioned something about if you had more points, maybe you could change your life or whatever. And he doesn't really know what he's talking about. We'll get there too. Um, Jin mentions at the end of his speech about the Sarah Browns and about um, uh, Momotaro and all that, something about an administrator, an admin that can answer more of their questions, but it doesn't tell them who it is. Again, we'll get there. So um, Kiji Brother eventually has this like 
contest with Momotaro or he's going to do something with him. And he has like a fantasy about what he's going to do and everything in his head that he tries to figure out what he can do to be better at Momotaro. He fails in his head, so he doesn't even try to do anything. <laughs> it's really funny. And Momotaro talks about how they're not so different, that they are pretty similar. And they kind of are. They're both trying to like please people and make them happy. It's just that Kiji Brother at least has some idea or semblance of what happiness means, whereas Momotaro has no idea. I have a theory myself with how they explain the Cerebrons. I feel like Momotaro might either be half Cerebron or like a baby from their world that was sent here. Because the way that he like deals with emotion and how he doesn't quite interact with people in a way that makes a lot of sense and how the switch when he changes into Don Momotaro, it just kind of comes off to me that, especially when um, I definitely thought about this more and definitely hit on it more in my head, when uh, he has the fight with the, the the brain persons with I think just Sonona and Sonona's trying to like learn how to laugh and he keeps asking him and he's like like this ah ha 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 doing a laugh thing and also it's just like this goofy Dama Motaro ha 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 laugh with me but it also kind of sounds like an elevated version of what Sonona's going through right now where he's like on the way to learning what emotions are and happiness and laughter and comedy but doesn't fully understand it so he's just trying to express it in whatever way he can. So again, that's my theory, is that maybe he's from their world somehow. I also have a theory, too, that I think that the Kami-sama character from Zenkaiger, either A, is Kaito Black, B, is Jin, or C, is from the same plane of existence as these three. Um, just because of how he acted and different things he did is very similar in demeanor to the three of them. So I wonder if he's going to be a part of this as well. I don't know. He, she, it, whatever, they, the omnipotence, whatever. So again, just more theory type stuff there. So um, eventually the um, nurse becomes her full Sentayoni, you know, self, this yogurt, you know, monster. And uh, they fight, of course. And um, once they uh, end up doing like, he's like, yeah, Don Mataro goes, come on, my comrades, you know, uh, let's do a finisher together. And they do the whole finisher thing together. Um, he defeats her and gets the Zyogur, uh the Zyogur, um what's it called? Uh, Sentai gear and it turns into in Damatar's hand it turns into the Zeoger uh, avatar gear right so he uses it and of course he goes into his alter little tiny robo form and then uses it as the Zeoger you know alter form for it and it just summons the three cubes and like makes them like kind of transform off of him and like he gets like giant big goofy little arms on himself he uses it to fight Sonona and make Sonona run off or whatever um so yeah, so overall it was a really fun episode. We get a lot of really good moments between the characters. I like how much Oni Sister and Sour Brother are trying to figure out what the hell is going on, whereas Any Brother could give a shit less, and Kiji Brother is more focused on his wife. Um, his wife is okay. They don't really mention what happened. Um, they're about to, and then the nurse gets called away, and she's the nurse that ends up being the Sentai monster for this episode. So we don't really ever get an explanation as to what happened to her. Um, I don't know if there's some kind of, if they're going to keep one with a digital, you know, online virtual reality thing, maybe there's some way that she's connected to like a virtual version of herself that was created, a copy or something like that, and that copy was Eno Brother's girlfriend, and when she fainted, the you know Brother's girlfriend gained consciousness, and then when she goes, you know, faints, kind of like Dream Drop Distance, Kingdom Hearts, if you're familiar with that, where one falls asleep, one's awake, one's awake, one's asleep kind of thing, I don't know. Um, I still don't really know what we're doing with that. If it's just like a fun tongue-in-cheek gag or if it's going to be this thing where she's really two-timing them or what's going on. But um, again, a really, really fun episode. I like that we focused on Kiji Brother again because I really like his character. He's my favorite on the team. I like that we get a bit more on Don Momotaro trying to figure out things about emotions and how to you know, please people and that you know his job is enough for him. Um, and uh, um, I like that we get a lot more on the brain persons and who they are as well. Um, so I'm really interested in where this is kind of going with this. Um, I do know now that Kiji Brother now knows that Momotaro is Damo, that Mo, Momoi Taro is Dao Momotaro. He saw him transform. So we got that at least. I think all that doesn't know is I think technically he might not know Kiji Brother is Kiji Brother, that Tsuyoshi is Kiji Brother. And I don't think any of them, um, I'm not sure if any of them know if that Inu Brother is Inu Brother, but I'm guessing that's coming soon. But I kind of like this slow burn thing where they're not sure who they are. They're still fighting together when they come together but they don't know who they are and their civilian identities is really interesting to me. I'm hoping it comes to a good head narratively and is a reason for it happening. Um, but yeah, so like I said, I really like the episode. Um, probably give it a strong 9 out of 10 just because I wish there was a bit more with the person of the week Sentai Monster character. They come in very late. And also, um, 
just a tiny bit more on where we're going with this whole thing with the brain persons and why Momotaro is a weirdo when he's transformed and stuff like that. I just want to kind of understand that a little bit more, but it's, you know, coming. It's just not happened yet. So, um, but overall, a really enjoyable episode. And I'm really liking this series. It's It's been a really nice, refreshing change of pace for Sentai. Very different from what we've had before, unique in a lot of ways, and kind of breaking free of the chains and the tropes that we've been beholden by, beholden by before. I really like that. Uh, and that theme song, oh my god, I can't ever skip it. But uh, anyway, what did you guys think of today's episode? Let me know in the comments below. Um, do you guys like today's episode, or this week's episode of Don Brothers, episode 6? Um, you guys in Kiji Brothers stand like I am. Um, what do you think is going on? What are your theories of what's going on with the brain persons and Momotaro and all of that? Um, do you think Momotaro might be from their same plane of existence, where he's a Cerebran or a half Cerebran, something like that? What's going on with uh, Miho, who's Tsuyoshi's, you know, Kaijo, you know, Tsuyoshi, Kijino's wife, but also somehow in her brother's girlfriend or something. Um, let me know in the comments below. I love to hear the, see the engagement and stuff like that. Not always very lively, but I get a few comments here and there. So um, anyway, thank you so much for liking the video today. If you want, if you would be so kind, that'd be great. Um, really helps me out sharing, watching the video, uh, commenting, subscribing. Thank you so much. I love putting out the Toku content. Now I'm subscribed for more. And as always, stay hooked on Hensions. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.